Really appreciate it. Okay, guys, are we ready to start this fantastic visual novel? An octave higher. Here we go. New game. This is our random Steam game. Holy shit, who is that? And why did he just disappear? Announcer, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've been waiting for, the main event of Lord Godwin's birthday celebrations, a sorcerer match between Lord Godwin's son, Lord Frederick, and a mystery challenger. So I think maybe I should move this. Hang on. Wait. You guys can see this, right? But why is it... I'm gonna move it over here so you can see. Even though it looks less. Why is it like... That's so strange. It's like whether I toggle it on or off, in OBS, you can see it. Alright, uh, Mystery Challenger. The six crystal balls floating in the corners of the hexagonal arena are glaring with nervous glimmer as if they, like the willpower-filled mana boiling in my hands, were growing restless, awaiting the start of the match. My opponent and I are standing face to face at the center of the massive arena, separated only by an old wizard referee. The stadium was luxurious, like a ballroom on a massive scale. Thousands of people could be seated in rows of seats, stretching all the way up to the ceiling, as far from the arena floor as the west wall was from the east. Still, when the announcer's voice rang out, it didn't fail to reach the ears of even the furthest spectator. He's using Amplify Magic on his voice, of course. Contestants, are you ready? The wizard gives me a solemn look, but also gentle, like a grandfather. <laughs> a weak smile peeks from his bushy white beard and mustache. Oh man, this game. Hang on a sec. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more, I think. Alright. Old wizard, Frederick Godwin? I'm ready. These formalities annoy me. Let's begin. Janice Wolf, are you ready? I am. Oh shit. A woman. This must be a joke. And for my father's birthday celebrations, no less. <laughs> a few weeks ago, I complained to my father that my matches were getting too easy and I wanted a real opponent who could fight. Now he's giving me this kind of match, and he calls it a special event. This must be his way to spite me. Is this woman even a sorcerer player? Sorcerer is a sport, a game of magic. The rules are simple. Six crystals are placed in the, corner, in the six corners of the arena, three for each contestant. And to win the match, all you have to do is break two of the three that belong to your opponent. This is the fun of the game because your opponent only needs to break two of your crystals to win. You can't just camp in front of one crystal and guard it. You have to keep moving and use strategy. All right, so we're gonna have like a nice keep moving, use strategy mini game here. Surely, right? Surely this won't all just be text. An experienced sorcerer wastes no time in formulating a strategy. Even before the match begins, they observe their surroundings, watch their opponent and decide on their opening move. For example, I'm gathering willpower. That should tell my opponent that I will cast some sort of earth magic spell, so they'd have to prepare their own spell that's appropriate to counter it. But this woman? She's as stiff as a statue. She's not ready in any magic. Her eyes just... gaze into me. Oh my god. Can we get... we have the Angkor stare, can we have the uh, octave stare right here? We just... cut this out. Um, it's strange. Her eyes don't communicate aggression. They're not murderous, but her eyes seem empty, like she wasn't seeing anything. But she was. She was seeing everything. Then let's begin. The orchestra begins to play furiously as soon as the wizard signals the start of the match. 
I'm upset that my father is making me play against this woman I've never even heard of, so I'll just finish this quickly. I'm in no mood for a game right now. I aim my arm at my opponent and prepare to summon a rain of rocks. But before I summon anything, an aura of faith starts emanating from her. She aims her arm at me and opens her hand wide. Her palm flashes, then... Whoa, look at that. A violent jet of wind bursts from her hand. I need to block this. I quickly raise my willpower-filled palm and cast my spell. Summon! Whoa, it's a giant wall of rock. A wall of rock erupts from the ground in front of me. The wind slams against my rock shield. The shield breaks and crumbles, but not before stopping the attack. But I'm not waiting around. As my shield crumbles, I'm running off to the side, gathering courage magic for the next volley. I feel my right forearm heating up with fiery power. But my opponent isn't idle either. She prepares to counter me with a magic spell of her own. Intelligence, huh? That's fire against water. This'll be interesting. Her sudden wind attack took me by surprise. I didn't expect her to be able to cast such a powerful spell so quickly. Maybe this wolf girl knows how to play sorcerer after all. But then again, so do I. Summon. I point my finger at her. Summon. She does the same. Whoa. A gush of fire roars from my finger at my opponent. A sharp blast of water shoots out from hers. It nullifies my attack and even packs enough of a punch to stagger me when it connects. Damn it, is my fire that weak? I think your problem is you're using a fire spell against water and you, you're unaware that it's not gonna be successful. Like, are you a fucking idiot? Said earlier, oh, this will be interesting. Oh, fire versus water. Surely this will not end poorly for me. I quickly recover my composure and return to my battle stance. I'm drenched now, but that's a minor discomfort. Wolf eyes me with an almost quizzical look. That's an almost quizzical look? That does not look quizzical at all. That looks like, uh, I don't know, you just saw a ghost or something. Holy shit. What's with that fire, kid? I thought you were pretty good with the way you reacted to my first attack, but then... Who are you to ask me such questions? I am a lord of overture, little Miss Wolf. Shut up and fight me. Humph. <laughs> and then the woman smirks at me. She's underestimating me now. That will work in my favor. Very well. However, she isn't one to be trifled with either, and I will not make the same mistake twice. As I gather willpower, my opponent starts building up faith. With swift, precise motion, she brings her right hand in front of her face, the open palm facing her. It's another summon of wind. In that case, I'll just... No. No, it's not just summon. Wolf suddenly closes the hand to a fist. She invokes amplify on top of the summon. Faith, summon, and amplify. It's a tornado. Whoa. Before I have time to consider my next move, Wolf straightens her arm and opens her hand. A tornado stretches dozens of feet into the air and barrels towards me. I try to summon the willpower I have built up, but it's too late. The tornado has sent me flying. I hit the ground hard. Arg! I get back up, but Wolf has already prepared another tornado. Who in the name of the gods is this woman? I need to reevaluate my strategy. Let's see, my rock shield won't be able to withstand that tornado. I can cast another earth magic spell like Quake, but I don't see how it can help in this situation. At any rate, I don't need to beat her, I need to break her crystals, but attacking the crystals openly probably wouldn't work. 
I expect she knows how to protect them. All right, let's try something unexpected. I charge up a new attack, this time focusing on courage. What? Fire again? Didn't you learn your lesson? Didn't learn your lesson the first time? Wolf's dispassionate voice is almost inaudible with the wind swirling about, but I can catch her taunting me. Yes, I hope that doesn't scare you. Don't worry, I'm not. What are you waiting for then? You've summoned the wind. Where's the amplifier? Oh, it's coming all right. Wolf makes a fist with her right hand. Amplify. This is it. Instead of dodging, I dash straight toward the wind that's quickly turning into a tornado. Summon. Oh my god, Amplify Summon. What are these equations of magic that are appearing on my screen there? Wow, what are you doing? Contrary to the woman's expectation, I'm not summoning a fire attack. Instead, I combine my magic with her own. This is a cooperative technique normally employed by two magicians who are working together. It's called combo magic. If I combine my fire magic with her tornado, a deadly fire tornado is born. Wolf can't reorient herself to the new situation in time. I quickly close the distance between us and get both of us caught in the fire tornado. We're both flung away like dolls. Flames too scatter in every direction. Oh my god. An attack like this would be a disaster for the audience if it weren't for the magic barriers around the arena that are maintained by security guards during so sorcerer matches. <laughs> I was about to say soccer matches. Where is the game? What do you mean? I don't see where Wolf is now, but as for me, I've managed to steer myself toward one of Wolf's crystals. I place... I place around as I'm flying across the arena, but Wolf is definitely not in this corner. I'm in the clear. I do have a problem in that I aim too high up in the air. With my current trajectory, I am sure to fly over the crystal, not onto the crystal. Lucky for me, I still have another trick up my sleeve. I am gifted with willpower. He who has strong willpower is a master of the earth. He who is master of the earth is a master of gravity. Amplify. The surrounding gravity suddenly magnifies, pulling me down with a force so powerful, I hit the floor almost as soon as I've cast the spell. Dot 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 dot. All I can hear is the orchestra. Everything else has gone quiet. And then, the audience. They erupt in cheers and applause. I suppose I put on a good show. The wind is knocked out of me and I'm sore, but I get back on my feet. Wolf's crystal, I see, is in pieces. It broke my fall, and in turn, I broke it. One of her other two crystals seems to have been damaged by the scattering flames, but it wasn't broken. Her last crystal is undamaged. My own crystals were all damaged by the fire, but none have been broken. This gives me the upper hand. If I can get to her damaged crystal, the match is mine. Goodness, kid, what the hell were you thinking? That was called scoring, little lady. Sometimes you have to sacrifice yourself for a point. A little pain never hurt anyone. Indeed. The old wizard slowly floats down between us, having used wind magic to distance himself from the stunt I pulled with the fire tornado. Nice reflexes, old man. Are both of you able to continue? In fact, that old wizard just gave me an idea. Yes, I'm fine. So am I. Wolf faces me again. Her gaze is cold and emotionless, like it was at the start of the match. I can't read anything on her face. It's like she's wearing a mask. Except she isn't. On the contrary, it feels like she's absorbing everything about me. It's like she can read my soul. Well, I certainly won't give her time to read her fill. Quickly, I charge my next attack. Willpower, transform! I aim at the ground and cast a quake. The arena shakes furiously. Look at how furiously she's shaking. Holy shit. An earthquake. I'm sure this kind of magic would hardly do any damage to a mage at wolf's level, but it doesn't have to. 
All it needs to do is delay her tornado for just a few moments while I recharge my willpower. As I expected, Wolf casts Tornado. But this time, Nullify. Casting Nullify negates the gravity beneath my feet. My feet lift from the ground. When Wolf's Tornado appears, I am already high up in the air, this time readying both willpower and courage. The anti-gravity effect only lasts a short while, but all I needed was a few moments with a bird's eye view of the arena. Hmm? Didn't think I could do this, huh? Summon. A flash of white light, a thunderous sound. A bolt of lightning shoots out from my palm. It rips through the air towards and then past Wolf, straight towards her damaged crystal. Victory is mine. What? Wolf just stands there, her cold eyes tracing the movement of the lightning bolt. She must have not expected this. Oh. In a fraction of a second, the lightning has struck the crystal dead on with another flash of blinding light and a loud bang. The light fades, the thunder dissipates, and I hit the ground with an unceremonious thud. Ignoring the pain, I force myself to stand up in order to accept victory from the referee. However, the referee hasn't moved. I look at the crystal and see that it's only slightly more cracked than before. What? Damn it, damn it, damn it. Wolf is still gaping at her damaged crystal. She seems almost as surprised as me. It's almost as if she were admiring what I just did. I straighten my posture and hear most of my joints crack. My muscles are burning. Well, I can just do it again. That was lucky. Sometimes these things happen. But the next bolt will shatter your crystal without fail. What are you going to do, eh? Wolf looks at me, again with that cold stare, and those empty eyes. She is going to lose the match, but she doesn't look worried. She doesn't look interested in the crystal as much as me. She is giving me the impression that the sorcerer match is beneath her. Who is this woman? Her gaze is off-putting. How can you keep so calm during sorcerer? Ha 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 ha! Suddenly, she bursts out laughing. Ha ha ha, I like you, kid. You're crazy, and I like crazy. Especially that trick with the fire tornado. How'd you come up with something like that? Sorcerer is surprisingly amusing, I have to admit. Just as I thought, she's not a sorcerer player. Throughout the match, she has never once tried to score. She just defends herself and attacks me. What is she? So what are you going to do now? Tornado again? Water magic? I bet you're running out of tricks. She smirks at me. Tricks? Kid, I don't use tricks. The only trick you need to know to survive in this world is how to cheat death. I hate philosophy. I hate being talked to like I'm a child. And I hate being tricked. Wolf, you're wasting my time. I suspected you weren't a sorcerer from the beginning. Let's dispense with the charades. Use everything you've got on me. Go on. I won't be satisfied otherwise. Everything I've got. Everything you've got. Wolf falls silent. Her amused expression disappears, replaced with the now familiar cold, empty-eyed face again. Be careful what you wish for, my lord. Wolf stretches her arms and legs out wide. In her right hand, she gathers courage. In her left, willpower. This is unusual. Hasn't she been using faith? She should only have two masteries, but she used intelligence before when she summoned water. Summon. Her right hand turns bright with red light. Summon. Now her left hand turns bright with yellow light. This isn't possible. She is preparing to cast two different magic spells at the same time. Wait, no. She is using combo magic like before, but by herself? Isn't that cheating? Is it even possible? Amplify. Wolf makes a fist with her right hand. Amplify. And then with her left. Holy shit. I look up to see a crack in the blackened sky. The sky, but we're indoors. Oh my god. But it looks transparent like the night. No, it's something like a portal. And coming through an enormous flaming ball of molten rock.
The object keeps growing and growing, and still it's not at the rim of the portal yet. It looks like it could be 40 feet across. 50. 60. I'm frozen. I've never seen something like this before. I'm going to die. At my father's birthday celebration, I'm going to die. Stop. I turn to where the shout comes from and find our referee standing right in front of Wolf, his ears reddened and his wrinkles all curved into V's. What in the name of mana are you doing calling Meteor in a sport match against a 17-year-old? Meteor? That thing is Meteor? I've heard of this magic, but never imagined I'd actually see it. Whoops. Uh, I glance up again, but the portal has disappeared, and with it, Meteor. Ha 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 ha. Wolf's laughter fills the stadium as she lowers her arms and releases all magic power. Sorry, ref. Our little lordling demanded it. The old wizard grunts in irritation. <clears throat> the whole stadium is silent. Even the orchestra has stopped playing. Everyone is waiting to see what this wolf will do next. And then at last, from some distant seat, Bravo! That's you guys. You guys are the audience. Soon the whole crowd is roaring with applause. The, that was one hell of a match. I believe I speak for everyone when I say that we've all been treated to a superbly exciting show. Dragoon Commander Janice Wolf, with her incredibly powerful offensive magic, and Frederick Godwin, who impressively held his own against all odds. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's right. Referee, what's the status of the match? The old wizard stays silent until the audience quiets down. I declare this match over. We'll call it for whoever has the most points. He turns and glances about the arena. Wolf, one broken crystal. Godwin, no broken crystals. Frederick Godwin is the winner. The audience erupts. They shout, Frederick, Frederick, and clap like drunken monkeys. That's you guys. A bunch of drunken monkeys. Uh, you did a good job, kid. You were sloppy, but I'm surprised you lasted as long as you did. Not bad at all. I'm in a daze, and can neither respond to Wolf's congratulations or the announcer's questions when he comes for a post-game interview. Soon, they both leave. I soon leave as well, though I really can't say how much time passes before I start to make my way out. Outside the hexagon, my father is waiting for me. I can see by the look on his face that he isn't as excited as the rest of the people in the stadium. What kind of fighting was that? I won. Indeed, I've seen many battles, both inside the arena and out. I would not call tonight's match a victory. Sorcerer is won according to points, not damage incurred. Did I not do you proud on your birthday? Do you know why your thunder failed to shatter Wolf's crystal ball? Do you know why your fire was so easily extinguished by her water? He knows I know. I've heard these rhetorical questions all my life. He'll tell me whether I answer or not. Because fire and thunder depend on courage, but you are not gifted with courage. Your strongest magical traits are willpower and compassion. Why don't you ever use compassion-based magic? Heal is an infinitely useful spell. It's certainly much a better choice than fire and thunder for heaven's sake. If you would just play the game slowly, healing yourself when you had to, you could have made the match into a battle of endurance. In such contest, he who has compassion has the advantage. You could have beaten Wolf if you used your head. I could have beaten her. In other words, I didn't. Compassion is useless. I'm doing just fine with courage, and I did beat her. Oh, is that so? My father's face makes a pitying smile. What about Wolf? She was using faith and intelligence in the beginning, but that meteor was willpower and courage. Janice Wolf is the commander of a police special forces unit who, who's been in countless battles, real battles, for more than a decade. Her gifted traits are willpower and courage, but she can wield all magic with deadly force. A special forces commander? Well, that explains many things. So her gifted traits are willpower and courage, but she was going to only use wind and water magic on me. She was playing with me. I need to get out of here. I storm out of Sorcerer Stadium through the departing spectators. Lord Frederick, best fight I ever saw. Unbelievable, Lord Frederick. You beat a Dragoon Great Commander. Story, bro. 
<clears throat> the fire tornado strategy was brilliant. This match was historic. Lord Frederick, you'll be a great mage someday. Their words are meaningless. What does a lord care for the opinions of those below him? Peasants and bastards. The whole damn lot of them. Wow, so you guys are drunken monkeys and peasants and bastards. You hear that? <clears throat> uh, drunken Sam, thank you for the 100 bits. An octave higher. All right, well, that was the intro scene, or is the game over? I don't know. What is this? What are you calling me? I didn't call you anything. This game called you that. Drunken Sam, thank you for the 100 bits. Oh, are you guys enjoying this so far? Thank you, thank you. I'm hoping this will at least get me some voice actor work in a, in a game or something. No, you're not enjoying this? You're not intrigued by that intro and want to see where the story goes? Uh, yeah, and Maker, thanks for 100 bits. Wind day, 24 sextilis AM, 313. I don't know what any of this shit means, but uh, okay. I'm hoping it'll give us like some choices to make at least at some point in the game to kind of keep things interesting. And it won't be just all reading. Good afternoon, professor. Good afternoon, class. The students are goggling at me, probably wondering why their teacher looks awfully young and is wearing the same school uniform as them. Your teacher for this course is Professor Johan Poe. I am not, however, Professor Johan Poe. My name is Franz Byron. I'm a senior, and Professor Poe is the advisor for my capstone project. I was asked to stand in for the professor today during his absence. I think it's best not to mention that this is the first time I've ever taught a class. I told the professor as much in protest, but he said I could just say whatever I want to say about magic. Well, let's see how this goes. Welcome to Introduction to Magical Science. It sounds harmless enough, right? Well, maybe so, but by the end of this semester, you will have encountered almost every topic that you will be studying in detail over the next four years. So you should probably open your notebooks. As half the freshmen scramble for pen and paper, I wonder what kind of student my professors thought I would become. These days I'm regarded as being very analytical, but how much of that was due to my own effort, and how much was due to the gauntlet that is introduction to magical suffering, as we used to call it. Just think, three months ago, these freshmen were still middle school students oblivious to the woes and worries of the world. Four short years ago, I was the same as them. Well, they knew what they were getting themselves into when they decided to study the, the science of magic in a conservatoire. The class has finally quieted down. It's time to start my first lesson. So, magic. I'm sure everyone here has used it before. As long as you have a bit of mana in you, you can use magic. You in the front row. I choose a girl at random. So when was the first time you cast a spell? Um, I think when I was seven. I touched the wick of a candle and it started burning. Congratulations, you're normal. Some freshmen are giggling even though I wasn't actually trying to be funny. Most people unconsciously start using magic as a child and learn to control it as they grow up. But although you can use magic now, you probably don't know how you're able to do that or why some of you are good with fire magic while some others are better with water magic, or why you can sometimes cast a particular spell but have no idea how to do it again. Well, what we call the science of magic is kind of the roadmap that we've made that will help you better understand these things. I stop and observe the freshmen. They seem interested enough in the subject. Well, maybe. Now that I'm up here, it really is hard to tell who's genuinely interested and who's staring right through me. As you all know, there are five magical traits that a human can have. These are courage, intelligence, willpower, faith, and compassion. Any magic is based on one or a combination of these traits. For example, water magic is based on intelligence. In addition, there are four types of magical abilities that can act on those five traits. They are summon, amplify, nullify, and transform. Don't confuse magical traits with magical abilities. Remember, the abilities use the traits. The act of applying a magical ability is called an invocation. Let's return to our water magic example. The most basic water magic is, of course, to make water appear. Whether you want to attack an enemy or to water your houseplants, the principle is the same. 
The water spell is cast by invoking the summon ability on the intelligence trait. I pick up a piece of chalk and write a magic formula on the blackboard. This is what we call a magic formula, and this one defined the formula of our simple water spell. And you read that as invoke the summon ability using the power of intelligence. You read that. I face the freshman again. It's really one of the simplest magic formulae. It only requires one invocation. Summon is the most basic of magical abilities. If a magic spell makes any kind of physical matter appear or materialize, it's almost certainly... It almost certainly involves summon. Fire is summon on courage. Wind is summon on faith. Don't worry, you'll have these memorized by next week. And then there's Amplify, which is used to increase some aspect of your magic to make it stronger, faster, larger. For example, a magician can increase the force of gravity by invoking Amplify on willpower. Or, for example, a more common use of Amplify is to strengthen a summon spell. I write a new formula below the water formula. Essentially, Flood is the stronger version of water. So say you invoke Summon on Intelligence. If, before you release the magic from your hand, you invoke Amplify on top of it, you will cast Flood instead of Water. Well, I'm sure all this sounds simple, but in practice, chaining two different abilities together like this is considered a high-level technique. Okay, you guys got all that? <laughs> um... Alright guys, how do you cast a wind spell? How do you cast a wind spell? Who else has already fallen asleep? <laughs> Fart? No, that's not it. Invoke faith, right. Summon plus faith, right? That's right, okay, good. I'm glad you guys are following along here. There will be a test on this later, so pay attention. Uh, um, the girl I spoke to earlier raises her hand. According to VNDB, this is about 10 hours and does have multiple endings. In other words, choices will come up. 10 hours? There's no way it's, gonna, it's 10 hours, right? I've always assumed that the stronger version of water is ice. A common misconception, ice is in fact much more complex is a much more complex magic spell. It's something we call combination magic, or combo magic, because it involves more than one trait. To cast ice, you have to combine water, which is based on intelligence, and freeze, which is based on courage. I erase the blackboard and write the magic formula of ice. As you can see from the formula, there are two invocations that are combined to cast the spell. Oh, and nullify is just the opposite of amplify, if you were wondering. It makes something become less. Some of the freshmen look confused. Well guys, no pain, no gain. If this formula looks complicated, take a look at this. If you wanted to make your ice spell even stronger, or if ice storm wasn't good enough for you, there's always blizzard. The freshmen look grim as I put down the chalk. Some of them might be having second thoughts about taking magical science as their major. Don't panic. It's really not that complicated once you understand the basics. The sound of the bell has an effect on the freshman akin to a revive spell. That's not too far off the mark, come to think of it. The sound of the bell is produced by a magic machine that summons wind to ring a small bell and then amplifies the resulting sound wave. Oh, that's right, I didn't even mention magic machines. The study of magic machines belongs to the magical engineering department but us magical scientists are expected to understand the basic principles of their design and function. Well, I'll leave that to Professor Poe, assuming he doesn't make me do this again. I follow the freshmen out of the classroom. I'm as happy as they are that, as they are that the lesson's ended. I'm really not cut out for teaching, I think. I know that Professor Poe is busy preparing for the symposium tomorrow, but how could he just push his job to me? What did he see in me? Speaking of the symposium, I remember that I have my own preparations to make. Professor Poe wants me to discuss the research that I'm doing for my final year project. My project. It's hopeless, if you ask me. But tomorrow I need to sell the idea to a room full of professionals. The annual symposium held in...
Conservatoire de Overture is not a mere school event. Even though it takes place in a conservatoire, it will be attended by many renowned mages from across Overture. After all, this is the most prestigious school of magical science and engineering in the city. I don't know what people will think when they see a teenager presenting a school project in the symposium. I mean, I haven't even started the project yet. I stride down the hallway towards the main entrance, paying little attention to the dwindling masses of students. It really is a beautiful institution. In a few hours, these halls will be entirely empty. At such times, you would be hard-pressed to identify this place as a school. The conservatoire is as elegant as a lord's mansion. I recognize some of my classmates in the hallway, but I'm not close enough with any of them to bother with greetings and such niceties. Well, that's hardly surprising. We're just strangers who happen to be sharing the same road in life. After this year, we'll go our own separate ways. Hey, Franz. Well, here comes an outlier. I turn in the direction of the cheerful female voice. Franz, where have you been? I thought you didn't have classes in the afternoon today. I know I said that I am not close to most students here, but there are exceptions. Hi, Aretha. Have you been looking for me? This is Aretha Blyton. Yes, Franz, I've been looking everywhere for you. I was dying to see you. She is not my girlfriend. Don't worry, love. I'm here for you now. I repeat, not my girlfriend. So, where have you been? Around. Where have you been looking? The cafeteria. And just the cafeteria. You were just having your afternoon tea. Bingo, you know me so well, don't you? Ah ha 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 ha. You're just easy to read. Ah ha 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 ha. Aretha has this particular way of laughing her heart out that's just pleasant to watch and makes you want to laugh along with her. We start walking. I was teaching a class. Professor Poe asked me to fill in for him. Whoa, cool. It's really not that exciting. <laughs> Are you sure? I bet you were checking out the girls. Hmm, was I? I might have. The class did have its fair share of cuties. I'm not a pervert like you, Aretha. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. But you thought some of them were cute, didn't you? Am I blushing? Maybe she is not the only one who is easy to read. It's almost sundown when we leave the conservatoire building. There are more people outside than inside, most of whom are getting ready to go home. While we are walking towards the street outside the conservatoire courtyard, a girl I don't recognize notices us and waves. She is wearing the same uniform as Aretha, which means she is a magical engineering student. Must be one of Aretha's friends. Hey! Aretha greets the girl. Hi, Aretha. Going home? No, Franz was just taking me out on a date. Aretha makes wild gestures to suggest how romantic this all is. I was? Aretha drops her facade in a hurry. Actually, yes, I'm going home. Oh, gods, are you kidding me? The girl chuckles at Aretha's little joke, and they start chatting. Aretha certainly has social skills. She's the kind of person who can make friends naturally with almost anyone. Sometimes I wish I could, too, but then again. Okay, bye then. See you tomorrow, Aretha. The girl turns to me. Bye, Franz. Uh, bye. The girl walks away after saying her goodbyes. Do I know her? I ask Aretha. Mm, maybe. Wouldn't you remember something, someone you've met? Not at all. I often meet people who I don't know, but who seem to know me. Sigh, this is why you don't have many friends. Well, maybe she knows you because you're famous. Am I famous? Aren't you the top student in the Department of Magical Science? There is no denying that my intelligence has helped me earn good grades. I may or may not have been named that at one time. These days, though, it's more likely that Professor Pose and my research project that's causing a buzz. Oh man, I don't know, guys. 10 hours of fucking reading? Are you serious? Am I really cut out for this? Dialogue option, that would be nice. It's not even a game. 
reading some weeb story. This is crazy. Doing free voice acting for this game studio right now. I really am. Oh, man. Let's give it, like, another little while, and then we'll maybe make a decision. Ugh. But yeah, I'm tired of reading, man. This is just too much. Ugh. Let's sour Keat. The storytelling is amateurish. It's not gonna get better. How do you know? It might. I wanna at least make a choice. Or something. Outside the conservatoire, the street is crowded with people who have just finished work and are jostling to go home. Aretha and I cross the street to a crowded omnibus stop. We get in line behind a dozen other people. Aretha stands in front of me. Isn't the line a little too long? She turns back to face me. Can't be helped, it's rush hour. Across the street, just outside the conservatoire, I see a student picked up by a personal chauffeur in a carriage. He gets into the carriage and plops down in the back seat while the driver sits in front. Once he is comfortable, his driver uses faith magic to manipulate the wind around the vehicle. The carriage floats into the air and, presumably, off to home. I want my own carriage, too. I give Aretha a look that says, who doesn't? Oh, Franz, you're gifted in faith, aren't you? Yes, but I don't own a carriage. At least you'll be able to fly one of those one day. Oh, I know. When I get a carriage, you'll drive me around, okay? Ah ha ha ha. Anything to make you happy, my dear. Then you'll buy me a carriage? You know what, though? I guess I should just look for a girlfriend rich enough to have her own carriage. Aretha tries to fake a sulky pout, but the corners of her lips are slightly raised. A different kind of carriage whizzes by. At its back sit a man and a woman, while the driver again sits in front. Unlike the previous carriage, however, in this one, the driver isn't controlling the air movement directly. Instead, he simply places his hand on a metal pad. You could always get one of those magic machine carriages. Uh-huh, there's that option too. You don't need to be gifted in faith to drive that kind of carriage because the magic machine will do the summoning. But I'd still rather make you my driver. She says that with a wide grin. A few seconds pass, and another carriage flies along the street. And then another. More people come and stand behind me. It's hot and stuffy in this crowd, even though we're outside. At last, we see an omnibus turn a corner and head our way. Its flying platform is designed to carry three dozen passengers at most, but it's packed to the brim. There's no chance that we'd fit on there. Titch, I told you it'd be crowded. I told you this is normal, Franz. Rush hour. Aretha is right. At this hour, the omnibus is always full of proles. The proletariat coming home from the factory. I don't feel like standing here. Let's just go. You're very snobby for someone who can't afford a carriage. I have nothing against proles. I just don't find the idea of standing on a bus platform with more than four dozen other people terribly exciting. You have the attitude of an aristocrat. I don't know whether it's good or bad. Ah ha ha ha. Fake it till you make it, right? We head in the direction of an aristocratic neighborhood. The proles don't commute through that area, so the omnibus won't be as crowded. I look up and see that dimming orange of the western sky. The sun has just now set. As the city darkens, a man in uniform walks to a nearby pole on the sidewalk. When he gets there, he raises his hand and points to the top of the pole. A ball of amber light appears and hovers a few inches above the pole, illuminating its surrounding area. So it goes across Overture every night. That worker is one of the illuminators employed by the government to brighten the city streets. If you catch the right omnibus at rush hour, you can see the results of hundreds of these illuminators' of efforts. Overture slowly starts to twinkle as you glide over the city. The city's modern look and its clean, almost shiny, multi-storied buildings and brick-paved streets are teeming with flying carriages. There are magicians everywhere, and magic machines are installed on every street corner. Overture is glorious. Not just a city of magic, THE city of magic. It's getting late. We should walk faster. Aretha pulls out her chronometer and checks the time. 
The air inside the chronometer is continuously in motion to keep the minute hand and the weightier hour hand rotating. These hands stay accurate all day as long as the chronometer is charged with mana every morning. She puts the metal timepiece back inside her pocket. So since you're in magical engineering, I guess your final year project is related to magic machines? Aretha's eyes seem to sparkle at the mention of her final project. Of course, I already have a title for it. Application of Binary Logic and Arithmetic in Magic Machines. W what Application of Binary Logic and Arithmetic in Magic Machines. She recited the title in a single breath. Yeah, I heard you the first time, but what the heck is that? You don't understand? I thought you were the smart one. I understand the words, but to me, that sound... That sounds like you're trying to get a magic machine to do math. Bingo, you're the first person to guess it right away, Franz. Aretha is beaming. Apparently she's proud of this idea. Aretha, that's preposterous. It is not. And look who's talking. Aretha is right to call me out. The topic Professor Poe convinced me to undertake is even sillier than magical math. I guess we are in the same boat, sort of. So which professor forced you into this? Oh, no, no, you misunderstand. I chose that topic myself. Aretha, we truly are star-crossed. You've committed the academic equivalent of suicide by choosing your own hopeless topic, whereas I'm about to be murdered by mine. We'll be factory workers within a year. Squinting away my smartassery, Aretha continues. It's really not impossible. The magic keyword ahem here is binary. So we're used to doing numerical calculations in groups of 10. We have 10 fingers and 10 toes, right? This is called a base 10 numeral system. But actually, there's no rule that says you must use base 10. For example, there is something else called a base 2 numer numer numeral system. It turns out that we can mathematically define simple arithmetic operations such as the addition of two binary numbers as combinations of basic logical operations like AND, OR, or NOT. In order to succeed with my final project, all I have to do is figure out how to implement these basic logical operations within a magic machine. I think I'll be able to do that by manipulating the flow of fire and water. If I can make fire represent a true value and water represent a false value, then I have two values, a binary system. You do realize I'm a magical scientist, right? We don't think in numbers. Listen, Franz, what I'm saying is, I may be able to make a calculator machine, powered by magic. That sentence doesn't make sense. Ah ha 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 ha, that's okay. You'll come to understand my genius someday. I don't tell her this, but if Aretha is confident about her project, it's probably going to be a success. Uh, it's easy to forget because of what a whimsical character she is, but Aretha is a very intelligent person, and when she puts her mind on something, she has the willpower to see it through to the end. Well, if she can make magic do math, then maybe I don't need to worry too much about my own impossible project. Finally, we reach the omnibus stop. Before long, an omnibus arrives. As I thought, it's nearly empty. This one is heading towards my house. Aretha and I normally go home on the same omnibus, but the buses at this stop travel different routes, so we need to part ways here. Well, take care. Say hello to Dr. Blyton for me. Will do. See you tomorrow. She waves me goodbye before stepping onto the omnibus. As her omnibus pulls away, I take a deep breath and look around. This neighborhood is slightly nicer than my own. It would be nice to own a house in a place like this someday. A young man rounds a corner off in the distance. Even from here I can see that he's dressed magnificently, but the only reason I notice him is from his stride. He looks angry. It's quite unusual to see a man of such high social standing walking alone on the street. Usually they don't bother to walk anywhere since they have their own chauffeurs. His strides are long and fast. He's virtually stomping down the street, and his face is a long scowl. It would be wise to avoid his attention, I think. I must have been walking for more than an hour now, but no matter how far I've gone, I still can't calm down. My fingers ache from being clenched into fists for so long. My palms sting from where my nails have dug into them. Relax, Frederick, relax. It was just a stupid sorcerer match. It wasn't a regulation match. You technically won. The only thing that's bothering you is that Father didn't see it as a victory the way the rest of the whole city did. It doesn't matter what he thinks. Right, it does not matter. I'm still the best sorcerer there is. I'm the highest ranked player in a generation. I faced off against a trained soldier, and won by the way. If father could have just held his tongue, I don't mind advice, but to call it a loss of all things. It was just a stupid sorcerer match. It does not matter. It does not matter. It does not. Like hell it doesn't. 
I am going to bury that whore next time. Janice Wolf, mark my words, woman. I will remember you. I will not forget this insult. Humiliation. For you. Not for me. And that meteor spell. Gah. Of course I would have flattened her with meteor if I could have studied that technique. And that it weren't banned by regulation. Rules, woman. It was a sorcerer match. What was a commander of a god's damn special forces unit doing in a sorcerer match? Father did this to spite me, I know it. I thought I would make him happy by performing for his birthday celebration, but apparently he only wanted to humiliate me for his own entertainment. The pavement under my feet is sticky. The ball of light above that pole glares too much. The sound of music coming out of the cafe across the street is off-key. That omnibus pulled up to the stop too steeply. All that conservatoire student and that conservatoire student getting on the omnibus looks like a blithering idiot. What the hell is it with all these damn people pissing me off? I just keep going to wherever my feet take me. Occasionally people stare at me, but I manage to ignore them. What, have they never seen a lord before? Oh man, is it getting better guys or worse? I don't know. I don't know. Better, this is pretty good. This is horrendous. You love, you love story time with Orator. Those in this game have this game has literally no options. The options are new game, load game, or wait, is there something up here? Hide text. What's this? What's going on over here? It seems like there's going to be interactions between characters, and maybe something happens. I don't know. Fast forward. Settings. Fast. Oh, so there actually are settings, you just have to get into the game. You, you can't access them from the main menu. Uh, there's no like... So you can go back if you need to. So this is just... If you want to take a screenshot or something, I don't know what the point of that is. Yeah, there's nothing that reads it to you, unfortunately. I would love to not have to read all this. And then I could just sit here and... Oh, man. Check keyboard shortcuts. Autoplay. Let's try that. I try to take in my surroundings, but there's barely anything to take in. I'm practically standing on dirt. The ground grinds beneath my feet. I can feel it. There are no balls of light that illuminate this alley. If it wasn't for the oil lamps hung wildly apart. Like, how am I... How, how are they cal calibrating this autoplay? I can't read any of this shit in time. <laughs> Alright. I mean, at least it's faster. Something feels wrong here. I set the text to fast. Oh, yeah. I mean, are, I'm paying attention. Are you guys paying attention? None of these people use magic. Wow. Look, it's an aristocrat. The man who spoke is dressed somewhat differently. He wouldn't say he's dressed better, but someone stands out. He's wearing a new uniform. Blah, blah, blah. Two men come near me. The man speaks again. Hey, kid, what are you doing in this place? Are you lost? I look down at the man. Who is he to question me? Hmm, a gutsy bourgeois. Has anyone told you not to wander into the proles areas? Proles, I see, of course. So this is where the proletariat lives. No wonder there's no magic. But he mentioned something called a libertad. He said libertad. <laughs> okay. Guys, just read this, okay? I'm reading it, you guys read it too. I can't read it out loud that fast. Oh, 
Oh my god, 2v1. Why don't we just use magic and take him out? Uh, well, yeah, this is faster and easier for me. Rip mobile users trying to read. Yeah, sorry. Ten hours of this. Do we really think it's going to last 10 hours? I don't think so. See you later, Tubzilla. I have not made a single choice yet, no. playing this game. This is the game that we chose uh, from a random Steam game. Madame Beauvoir. Well, uh, oh yeah, is this a, uh, what do you call it? Fuck, what's the word? Turn off the autoplay. Brothel, that's the word. Oh yeah, brothel. Too hard to read. I'm just gonna summarize it for you guys. Okay, I'll read it. All right, the sky's black. Blah blah blah. Yep, there's only blackness. Yep, it's it's nighttime basically is what they're saying. There's a certain grandness from the blackness. Yep, sure. Uh, I went home. As I turn away, my eyes fall on an angel, a lovely girl. Okay, yep, it's very lovely. Uh, her delicate hand plays with the braid of hair, okay, is she a worker? Isn't she a little young? There are no reasons for a young girl to visit a place like this, maybe she's passing through, I don't know. Her hair flutters as she walks, her face glitters, she's beautiful, yada yada. That's more than that, I've beheld beauty itself, yep, okay, so he has a crush on this girl, and without knocking she takes the door's uh, handle, steps inside, whatever. So what is she doing there, I don't know. Is she a hooker? I'm home. Oh, maybe she lives there. I announced that in a very small voice, saying I'm home is a habit I've had since a little kid. Kaya, help me. The young woman runs across the lobby screaming, she's naked. Ha ha ha, I'm gonna get ya. Old man. And then a man twice her age runs after her. I don't know what kind of role playing they're doing today. I won't be asking. Oh, Elise, you're back. How is your work? You know, I turned to see a woman who called my name. It's Madame Beauvoir. Oh, you know, same as usual. That sounds like my day business as usual. Yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Yep. Unfortunately, naked old men chasing naked screaming girls is business as usual here. Uh, she gives me a smile, prances over. Uh, Madame Bouvard is the owner of this brothel, but blah, blah, blah. Yep, she's past 30. Madame is gorgeous. Her demeanor and manner. Despite her age, she is the most expensive prostitute. I owe my life to the madam. If she hadn't taken me in, I was abandoned. I mean, sure, I would like to have a normal home, but at least I can sleep with a roof over my head. When she took me in, she agreed not to make me work. 
since I got a job, 16th birthday, she's gonna make me serve my first customer. My birthday is in less than three months. With nothing else to do, I drag myself upstairs and waddle past a series of doors. No matter how many times I hear the sounds behind those doors, I cringe. I'll never be comfortable with it. Yep, a door opens in front of me. A young, naked, screaming woman comes out of the room. She isn't naked and isn't screaming. A nice change of pace. Oh, hey, Elise. Where did the man go? He had to leave through the window because the Dementors were coming for him. The who? It's part of our role play. Never mind. I'm also wondering how she emerged from a room on second floor when I saw her running by body blah blah. She mutters something with a sigh. She's exhausted. Sleeping with that geezer is one thing, but being chased around the house is taking a toll. Why do you keep servicing him then? With his head turned up, she glances at me uh, because his tip is bigger than his cock. Aha. <laughs> Wait, where, where is this going? Uh, oh, you're bleeding. Yeah, she's bleeding. Yeah, he got a little aggressive back there. I bring my right hand to her wound, a small benefit of working at the factory, blah, blah, blah. Most of it is ending with the work shift. Sometimes I go home with little mana, focus on compassion. Oh, there you go. Transform. Magical. <laughs> Maybe it is a sexy game. Uh, there you go. Wow, thank you, Elise. You're welcome. Didn't fix your torn dress, though. Well, magic can't fix everything, can it? Too bad, though. If magic could fix inanimate things, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so magic cannot fix inanimate things, guys. That would be nice. Compassion magic only works on people, plants, and animals. Okay. Wonder if your magic can restore my... He, he, he. She is giggling naughtily. What is she talking about? Your what? Never mind. I think I should get my next customer. Thanks, Elise. She goes downstairs to greet a customer who has just entered the lobby. I head to my room. Soon I come upon a small set of stairs. They lead to the attic where I live. Okay, so the girl lives in the attic. She's been living here six years, you know, it's uh, quiet. She collapses onto the bed. Feeling exhausted, she hears obscene sounds from below and high-pitched laughter. In less than three months, you'll be joining the chorus. I don't want to think about that. Right now, all I want to do is sleep. You accidentally loaded the Steam page, that's why your speakers fucking exploded. Earth Day! I open my eyes, the room is, in, is sunny, I groggily sit up, blah blah blah, yep. Once I do that, she grabs a towel and a uniform, you're still wearing factory clothes from yesterday. You go downstairs thinking how unpleasant to change out of work clothes. Maison in the morning is pleasant, it's different at night, it's quieter. Yep, uh, bottles of booze and cigarette butts all around. When you get to the bathroom, you peek inside. Sometimes you find a passed out girl there. Thankfully, it's empty today, so I go in. Come out of the bathroom, change into a cleaner set of clothes. Small change, but you feel refreshed. You leave Maison after drinking a glass of water and skip breakfast. Morning air is nice. Okay, yep. Maison has a large courtyard. Factory is uh, located in the Proles district. Good morning. They smile and wave at me. People around here used to scowl at me if they saw me entering and leaving, but they're quite friendly now. There are a couple of other factory workers waiting at the omnibus stop, okay? Factory has thousands of workers, so I don't know anyone waiting here. We exchange smiles as a greeting, yep. Before long, I see the omnibus arriving. Get on the platform. Okay, she's getting on the bus, guys. Sometimes she finds it scary, okay. Street by her factory is closed. Detour through the city center. <sighs> All right, this seems. Uh, let's let's see. Let's see what the fast forward button does, guys. Let's see what that does here. Allows you to quickly skip through text that you have previously read. Young boy and girl who looks slightly older than me. 
Okay, so she's meeting the uh, the other people now. Aretha and I are taking our usual omnibus. There's something unusual about it. Yep. Wait, did autoplay stop? Oh, I think autoplay stopped. What's with the omnibus? You know. Should I just let this play and go do something else? Do you guys want to... I want to pay attention. I have an idea. Hang on. Maybe we can do this. Pay attention to have some gaming in here. Okay. This is super small though, this window that I'm playing in. though, right? This still isn't quite doing it for me. Can you put Cookie Clicker in the top left as well? What is that? We get to make a decision soon. I'm glad we discovered this autoplay feature though. Makes things a lot more interesting. I think we might have uh, hit a snag here. Uh... Oh, 
Hey. Um, aha, relax, friends. I'll teach you a little magic charm. Whenever you get nervous, say my name three times in your heart. It will make the nervousness go away. No. I'm not learning that. Fuck that. Um. Oh, here we go. My neck. My back. Lick my yussie. And my crack. My neck. My back. Lick my yussie. And my crack. My neck. My back. Lick my yussie. And my crack. My neck. My back. Lick my yussie. And my crack. My neck. My back. Lick my yussie. And my crack. My neck. My back. Lick my yussie. And my crack. Okay, here now. Oh, it's Professor Poe, guys. There he is. Alright, it's only one of these four on top left. We have 13 mines left. So one of these or one of those could be shared. Yeah, I think this is. Ah, oh, fuck. Just make a guess that that's not one. Nope. Okay. Bummer.
Oh, round of applause. Round of applause. Alright, where to now? Anything I can do here? I guess we go here, there. I know this music is kind of getting on my nerves a little bit. To be honest. It's kind of repetitive, is it not? Hey Jude. Jude, who's Jude? Don't make it bad. This is looking like a dead end over here. So it's one of these two, but it's one of these two. It's not this one. Sounds familiar. Two more. So it's one of these two, meaning it's not this one. Easy. There we go. What was that? 334 seconds, guys. 334 seconds. How are you guys enjoying the story? What's happening? Tell anyone know? Looks like Elise is in the factory where she works. They're about to fuck, oh shit. Jude got sucked. You got a supervisor and a buddy. Okay. Can I add cookie clicker? It's a passive game. What is that?
You guys don't want to see me play more Minesweeper. Guys, should we choose a new game? Are you guys sick of this? Should we implement a no visual novels policy? Maybe a poll. Refund if less than two hours played. Nah, it's okay. Uh, all right, vote, vote in the poll, guys. Vote in that poll. Let me know if you want to see a new game right now, if you want to continue with this game. You're upset with me right now over this shit. Why? Is there a sex scene? It's unwatchable on mobile. Oh. Do I need to do this? Here. Alright, so 80% says we should pick a new game. I think we should probably pick a new game. It's probably a good idea. Leave it on and come back every hour to check choices. That's an idea. We could play some F Zero or something and leave this and do do something like this. Uh, hang on, get this off here. What do we think? You're finally starting to fall asleep listening to this game. But what would we play? I don't want to do two random Steam games at a time. I want to devote all my attention to one Steam game, you know, I can... disaster this choice was, huh? Alright, we'll, we'll play a new game. I don't think I want to continue this one in terms of, like, putting it in the top right or something. Um, apparently this is going to take many hours, so... I think it's too passive of a game. I think in the future we'll say no more visual novels. I was hoping this would be something like Detroit Become Human or something, where there's like a lot of choices to be made, but it's like, we've been playing this for now, I mean, how long have we been playing this? Like, like an hour and a half or so, and there's been one choice. One single choice. Like, what the fuck, man? Uh, this is not what I want to do. Looks like Franz is presenting his thing for the uh, research project. That's great. Uh, you like the sex scene? Was there a sex scene? What if we do this? Uh, settings. Instant. It's 
faster, but it's like... Yeah, it's not even that fast. Yeah, what if I just do this, though? Hang on. What if we turn off auto, right? No, I want to turn off auto. How do we turn off auto? It doesn't turn off. Let's do this. I mean, this maybe we can end it pretty quickly with this, and we can say we beat it. People seem to be pretty impressed with this project. Yeah, okay, these two are talking. Frederick meeting Franz, that's interesting. Now we're, ta we're at from Frederick's point of view, I guess. Fortunately, I can actually read at this pace. Oh, whoops. Well, if any of you guys are interested in the story, you could just watch the VOD and just pause frame by frame to read through what's happening. And it'll be worth the $12 that I spent. <laughs> it looks like we were back at the brothel. Maybe we should have stopped and, and read that. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Hell yeah. Now we're speedrunning. I wonder if there's a speedrunning board for this game. <laughs> I should submit my time. World record clicking through visual novels. so impressed. Nice. Oh, new day. Oh, Lord Godwin. Professor. Yep, okay. Interesting. Okay, so Franz and his professor are meeting Lord Godwin about something. Talking about the girl who works at the brothel as a factory worker as well, or lives at the brothel as a factory worker. Okay, it'll take me another hour. I don't think so. After that, father and professor talk about several research projects. I just made a choice. Plus one. Winning. Hell yeah, dude. I didn't even see what the choice was, but pretty good one, I guess. I think I would have chosen the opposite and not gotten a plus one, though. That's two choices, guys. Two choices. And now we are using magic against this guy. Policeman. Oh, it's that girl. She's playing piano again, okay. Sensual. I saw the music. I saw the word sensual in there. Are they about to bang? Oh. Uh. 
Oh no, she's never mind. I think she's too young for that. Oh, uh, my sponsor. Another choice. That's three choices, guys. So we're back with uh, Elise's point of view. Are we still enjoying this, guys? Maybe some nice mouse click ASMR. Speed running. Speed running right now, yep. We're doing a speed run. I love this game. I knew you guys did. <laughs> we were never enjoying it. What are you talking about? It's the popo -po again. Compassion from above. Tall man. Oh, new character. Did he just fart? Gesang. When is Janice Wolf gonna come back? I liked her. Actually waiting for the ads now. No, this is good. Trying to hold the mouse in a more comfortable position here. Oh, shit. There we go. Can I skip the whole game? No, I paid twelve dollars for this. I'm gonna enjoy it. Use an auto clicker. Oh, there she is. Speed run and install. Uh, dipping blow darts, thank you for the, what was that, 54 months? Hang on. E, 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 E,
completely stands frozen in front of the apartment building. Her eyes are open wide. How long does that take? Like three seconds maybe? Let's say every click equals three seconds. And the game is eight hours long. Or let's say the game is eight and a half hours long. If playing it a normal way. How many clicks will it take? Okay, so let's do this. So three seconds, so that's 20 clicks per minute. Okay, 20 times 60 uh, is, uh, what, 1200 clicks per hour? No, it'll take 1200 clicks to get through an hour's worth. So 1200 times 8.5. Uh, 90, 96 plus 600, one, 10,200 clicks. Wait, is my math right? Yeah, I think so. 10,200 clicks to get to the end of this game. How many do you think I've done so far? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Six, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. I don't know. I feel like we've got to almost be at the end of the game, right? It's Aretha. She's back. Five hours for the full game, not of clicking, no way. So how many clicks do I get done in, in 60 seconds? Let's see. I mean, it should be roughly 60. I don't know what an auto clicker is. But I consider myself basically an auto clicker. It's the most nothing that has ever happened in a video game. Who's Alanis? All right, so Elise is staying with Areth Areth Urethra now, I think. It's Aretha's mom, is it? Uh, I hate Frederick. I don't hate Frederick. We have another choice, the fourth choice of this game. I hate Frederick. He shouldn't have assumed I was a whore. I don't ever want to see him again. Yay. Frederick is going to the conservatoire. Why? I don't know. The girl who knows Franz. Okay, he's trying to find Franz. The click to choice ratio is insane. It really is. Oh, look, all three of our characters and Frederick is here too. Guys, we're gonna beat this game, okay. Oh, it's another game of Sorcerer. Who's playing? Frederick Godwin. Gustav Nabokov.
we have to beat it. Yeah, I feel like it's, uh... You know, it would be a waste of $12 to not beat this. This is hell? What are you talking about? This is great. Sham poll. Well, I wasn't doing this before the poll. But now that I'm doing this, I feel like it's going to, it's not going to take that long, right? We got to get to the end of this eventually. Might be okay of a visual novel. The dude's head has turned 120 degrees. He's an owl. Twelve dollars is a decent burger. I know. I could eat at five guys, like... You know, I could pay for like... A third of my order at five guys with that. Wait, was there a choice? I missed the choice. What was it? My mouse is starting to get squeaky. This game is wearing it out, man. Wait, is this, um... Yeah, for real, these. Is that not... Am I gonna get DMCA from this shit? It does seem like every time I play a random Steam game, I get like a DMCA claim. Because I think a lot of these games use like... I don't know. Not free use music, but... Pay to use music. That's not like approved for a stream. I do like my mouse though. I tend to just get like cheap gaming mouses. What mouse do you guys use? I think this is Steel Series. I don't know. But I don't like to spend a lot of money on a mouse. So I just spend like, I don't know, 20, 30 bucks. Apologize to Franz. I'm not apologizing for shit, Franz. Fuck you. That's another choice. What are we at now? Six? Seven? It's these guys again. Libertan. These guys just always want to fight, you know? Why can't we just be peaceful? I feel the aura of his faith. Ooh, aura. This is an intense fight that's happening right now. I wonder how many pages this, this would be if it was like printed in a book. You had two 502s to come to double click malfunction. I don't know what 502 is. 420? Yeah, you're probably right. Almost as long as Return of the King. And look at this, we're knocking it out in one day. That's pretty impressive. Oh, no, made another choice. Oh, shit. That choice. I should. I need to put my clicker like over here or something. I think my goal is to get the worst ending so we can end this as soon as possible. 
Does anyone know what's happening here? You stopped paying attention a hundred minutes ago. Casting spells on the pianos now, I guess. Whatever. Now imagine binding left click to an unlocked scroll wheel. Is that possible? Rich bastard got knocked out by the Libertad guy. Now Franz maybe likes Aretha. Jude. Jude is back. Her best friend. Ten choices in part one and a potential part two. Are you serious? So we've done six or seven, I think. Done, you think so? This is pretty well written, not gonna lie. Yeah, it's pretty good. According to the Steam page, the plot of the game is at least trying to revive the piano. Which is not a thing you can do because the piano is not alive, wow. I can finish Cookie Clicker faster than this game? I don't know what that is though. What about calling the police? Look for the key or call the police, guys. I'm calling the police. Muscular man. Hendrix. Was the muscular man, I guess. Franz! Everyone's here, holy shit. Wolf, Franz, Lord Godwin, Elise, Aretha. Where's Frederick? Looks like Aura dominating, damn right. You shouldn't be here, kid. We're back at the brothel, nice. We're outside the brothel. Oh, prostitutes scrambling. What the fuck? We're carrying out an assault on the brothel. Why would we do this? My god. Harg. Oh my god, it's these guys again. They're here too.
Oh, they're rescuing Frederick from the brothel? I think Frederick was kidnapped by the prostitutes. Who? Frederick. The guy from the beginning. Who was in the match. Frederick bruises and cuts fade. All right. Oh, whoops. Help Franz escape with Frederick. Uh, what should we do, guys? Franz or Frederick? I'm helping Franz. Fuck Frederick, man. He called me a whore. Uh, I don't know if that was the right choice, though. I do feel like we're getting towards like, uh, you know, more interesting things in the plot, so maybe it'll end soon. Lots of spells happening, you know, this could be like the grand finale. Plus, didn't it? Who said there was 10 choices in the first part? I'm pretty sure we're at like 8 or 9 maybe. Is it that a poll was ran to play another game? 80% said move on, but we're still here. We are moving Only on. 20% gang wins from a stubborn bald man. We are moving on right here. Fight Frederick, don't fight Frederick. Okay, that's nine choices, right? I feel like I've done about 10,000 clicks. <laughs> Greatest an octave higher player of all time. Hell yes. Roll the credits. I'm submitting this to speedrun.com. Incredible. Best $12 ever spent, exactly. What an incredible game. Uh, just the music, the animations, the story. 
um, the gameplay, you know, I really loved how you could autoplay it, you could fast forward it, you could just click right through, you could read it. There's just so much you can do in this game. Um, fantastic. It was a privilege to, uh, to get this as a random Steam game. Yeah, it even had prostitutes. Um... Oh, post scene? The end? Oh no. What is what? Do 100%. Finish the story. It is the end. Okay. Setting up for a uh, sequel, I guess. Holy shit. I hurt my head. Thank you for the 29 months. Really appreciate it. Swearin, thank you for the 100 bits. Alright guys, we did it. We beat an octave higher. Um, new game. Yeah, I think we should choose a new Steam game. That was a lot of fun. Didn't you guys enjoy that? I bet you did. Um, all right. I think from now on we will institute a no visual novels policy though, because that was, um, you know, there was not a lot of choices to be made in that one. Maybe others would have better, a better rate of choices. Um, but yeah, I think we will, we will just, Let's remove this and we will do another random game choice. All right, guys, we're going to do another one.